they're a permanent resident, uh, they can only apply for a permanent resident status for the child as well. So it's going to be a visa application for that. So it's not a citizenship application. It's known as a child visa application. And the uh, subclass is known as subclass 101. And this uh, child visa, we haven't had to do one in a long time, but uh, the last one I did took about 12 to 14 months on average. So this one is probably going to be a bit more painful. Um, overall, it's, it's just because of their visa status. That's the reason why um, a permanent re resident has to go for a child visa. That means the child itself won't obtain uh, citizenship status. The, if, if your clients ask this question, how come permanent residents, um, parents get Australian citizenship status for their children? Where, how can that happen? It only happens if the child was born in Australia. So if your clients had children born in Australia and the parents were permanent residents, the child born in Australia, then the child can get Australian citizenship status automatically. But where the child is overseas, parents overseas, then it's the then it's the child visa instead. So they'll just they'll get PR, but they won't get uh, they won't get permanent residency. In this scenario, I would say bring the baby over to Australia if the if they can bring the baby over to Australia on a tourist visa. And then when the baby's in Australia, we lodge an onshore child visa. So the child visa, there is an offshore version and an onshore version. The reason why we do the onshore version is because once the child comes in on a tourist visa, after the tourist visa expires, the child will get this thing known as a bridging visa for the child to remain in Australia while the, the visa is being processed. So if the, the visa say takes 12 months, 18 months to process, it wouldn't matter because they get this bridging visa to stay on in Australia. And the bridging visa is only issued when the application is lodged when someone is in Australia. So they, if we lodge it offshore, like when they're in the US, they won't get the bridging visa. So then the child is expected to just wait there. Or maybe they can come in on a tourist visa, but they don't automatically get the bridging visa. Whereas if they come in on the tourist visa, they are then physically here, we lodge the child visa, they get the bridging visa to stay on. Again, if they can get access to, the child can get an access to a US passport, the child can apply for an electronic tourist visa. Those visas are usually granted within 24 hours. And then the child can come to Australia and then come in on the tourist visa. The tourist visa is going to be valid for three months. And then within three months, we must lodge this uh, child visa application. And then the bridging visa will usually be issued on the same day we we lodge the child visa. So the bridging visa gets issued straight away. And it's it's there's it's almost guaranteed that they will get the bridging visa. The, it's, it's the main requirement that when you lodge an application here, you get the bridging visa. And again, it's issued uh, on the same day the application is submitted, if not a day after. And then the bridging visa will activate the day after the tourist visa expires and then the child just stays here while the while the child visa is being processed. We would prefer that the child just travel once to Australia and stay in Australia at least until the child visa is approved. So while on the bridging visa, technically the child can travel in and out of the country but our preference is to avoid it. The reason being that um, the, the child will have a pending application when the child flies in and out too frequently, um, immigration here could start asking questions. Having said that, if there is a serious need for travel, say the child has a condition and the treating doctors in the US and needs to go to the US in say an extreme scenario in that, we can apply for permission for the child to travel out. So. Um, it's possible, like it's possible, but we prefer not to. If it gets to a point where we need to, then we can put in a request for the child to travel. The request will take about two weeks for, for immigration here to process it. And then when they approve it, they will approve it for how long the child needs to travel for. So say, for example, the child needs to go for a medical follow-up or a treatment, and it's going to say take two months. 
then uh, the, 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 the Australian government or the department here would tend to grant it, say, for three months to give a bit of leeway for the child to leave the country. So the child visa, once approved, will give the child permanent residency status as well. Uh, so be valid for five years. Uh, and then, to, so every permanent residency, it's always valid for five years. And then to, and then you got to renew it every five years. And then when the main criteria you need to satisfy to renew for five years is to show that in the, in the five years before, at least two years, you were physically in Australia. So say if the child is, you know, zero years of age, and then up until the age of five, he or she will get permanent residency status. As long as between the ages zero to five, the child was in Australia for at least two years, then the child gets another PR for another five years, renews it that way. Or if in the meantime, if the parents apply for citizenship while the child's uh, PR was still in play, the parent can actually include the child as, as one of their dependents and then get the child citizenship status with the parent as well. That is also a possibility. So the Medicare benefit will kick in when the bridging visa activates. So again, when the child comes in, the child will come in first on that tourist visa for three months. Generally speaking, won't get access to Medicare. But when the bridging visa activates, then the child can get access to Medicare. Our clients can definitely just sign up for like private healthcare insurance. Nothing stopping them. So it'll be just like a travel insurance or um, local insurance out here. Most most clients would just go for a travel insurance because it's probably only going to be safe for two to three months, and then after that they submit the the uh, the, the, the the child visa application, and then we'll get Medicare access after. So yes, it's possible for them to just get travel visa to bridge the time, and then once they submit the child visa, they can get access to Medicare out here. We should start um, sort of uh, as, as soon as possible. Not um, When I say as soon as possible, it's usually at the point where we've sort of sorted out the surrogacy process itself. We know who our um, uh, identified person is going to be. And then it's usually about four to six months into the pregnancy. Then we start the visa process because we then give the clients the list of documents we need. We prepare all the documents and literally, and, and then the parent goes there, brings the child back to Australia. Literally, it can be the day after they arrive in Australia, we can put in the actual visa application itself. So yeah, not, not to wait until the birth or after the birth because it's possible, but you're probably too late or it's going to slow down the process. That's the correct word, slow down the process because the documents, it's going to be hard. You may need to get the surrogate in the US to sign off on some things. So we usually start the process about six months into the pregnancy. I think the best way is probably to reach me um, through my email or phone, just initially to set up some time for us to speak. Um, sort of, uh, we, we like to sort of put aside at least half an hour to an hour to, to really walk our clients through the process. Just help them understand where it's going from there um, and then let them consider all of that information and then once they have that once they start the process then we can always get in contact with them again uh, depending on how far maybe it's the first or the second trimester as part of the process that's when we can get involved in the picture but yeah have that initial chat with us just so that they understand the considerations i, I tried to cover as much of it here but everyone's circumstances is obviously unique so always do feel free to reach out and we can sort of have a more in-depth discussion. G-S-H-C <laughs>